Thanks everyone for joining us today. We'll get started here. All right, it's a few minutes after the hour and, and we're gonna get started today. So thank you for being with us for today's webinar uh, with our friends at Elsevier. Uh, today's webinar is collaboration in cluster-based economic development. And we have some, some great content to share with you today. And we'll get to that in just a few moments. First, just a few housekeeping items. If you do have any questions, please use the Q&A function that's down below in the Zoom function. Uh, we will be able to take questions and uh, answer those questions at the end of our presentation today. If you need any technical assistance or would just like to say hi to the rest of the group that's here today, please feel free to share your information, uh, who you are uh, in the chat. Uh, and if you need to access me directly, you can do so in that chat as well. We will be recording today's webinar and everyone will be on mute except for today's panelists and uh, we'll get started here. So my name is Tim Hines. I'm the Executive Director of the University Economic Development Association. And just a little bit about who we are. Uh, the University Economic Development Association connects our members uh, who consist of higher education institutions primarily, but also their ecosystem partners, which include private sector businesses and economic development organizations, among others. And we connect them to resources that help facilitate economic growth within their communities. Uh, our members represent those who are truly on the cutting edge of modern economic development. Our economy has evolved into an entity that behaves much differently than its predecessors, and we try to provide resources to address all of the concerns that economic development uh, is facing today. So our successes are all around, and our modern economy is around innovation and entrepreneurship, which we're going to hear a lot about today. It's about fostering talent and young people from preschool through life to embolden them and, and think and create outside the box. Uh, from those traditional academic or professional requirements. And then it's about creating environments, uh, placemaking opportunities for uh, that attract those people and want to do things within the communities in, in which we're doing all great work. So never before has uh, academia, the private sector and economic uh, development stakeholders been so reliant on one another, one another to create that economic opportunity. And UEDA really, uh, seeks to be that nexus of, of those ecosystems and idea generation. So our members work together to expand economic opportunity within their communities and regions by leveraging those aspects of talent innovation in place. And we recognize that all of those are interconnected and rely on one another. So we help to foster those holistically. Our members can take advantage of all of our benefits of membership. So if you're not a member of UEDA already, we encourage you to do so. Most importantly, UEDA provides a forum for collaboration with peers around the globe on higher education economic activities. So our website uh, to join is join.universityeda.org. And we encourage you to check that out and, uh, and, and check out all we have to offer. Some of those things that we have to offer are our networks, uh, which are engaged uh, in those, uh, those topics of talent innovation in place, the dates and times of monthly convenings, uh, which we generally try to stick to, uh, are, uh, are on your screen there. These are semi-facilitated semi sessions uh, where we have like minds gathering together, discussing news, challenges, best practices, metrics, and so on. Uh, UEDA membership is not required to participate in these convenings, uh, but we do have online workspaces uh, that are for members where you can post questions and share resources 
uh, amongst those topics. So we do encourage you to check those out. Uh, if you are a member and haven't participated in our networks, we encourage you to do so. And if you're not a member, we encourage you to, to join the convenings and, uh, and of course, to, to check out UIDA as a membership organization. And one of our great partners uh, for the last several years has been Elsevier. And Elsevier, as many of you know, uh, is a leader in information and analytics. Uh, they're a data company and they do global research around, around eco ecosystems uh, and primarily around health. Uh, Elsevier helps researchers and healthcare professionals to advance science and improve outcomes uh, for the benefit of society through that data. So uh, I will turn things over to Moises, who is from Elsevier, and he'll give a little bit of introduction perhaps into Elsevier, a little more than I, I, I can, and uh, then introduce today's speaker. So I'll turn it over to you, Moises. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, team. Um, so thank you for, for this uh, space. My name is Moises Moreno. I'm a senior solutions uh, engineer for our server solutions. And well, basically, I'm just going to introduce uh, our presenter of today, which is uh, Judith Sheft. Uh, so Judith Sheft is the executive director of the New Jersey Commission on Science, Innovation and Technology. The commission's mission is to accelerate economic development through science, innovation and technology by stimulating academic industrial collaboration, encouraging and supporting entrepreneurs and inventors. Previously, Judith was involved with regional economic and cluster development at New Jersey Innovation Institute for managing the Health IT Connections Entrepreneurial Cluster Development Program, the NJIT iCorp site, and the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. She has been engaged with technology, IP innovation, and commercialization efforts, working with faculty and students to create startup companies and establishing licensing relationships with the corporate partners. She advised external startups and NJITs, high technology, Life Science Business Accelerator Incubator. Judith serves on the board of Rater Newark Enterprise Corporation, a startup Newark, Women's Center for Entrepreneurship Corporation, Einstein's Ali, SheTech, Murray Women's Center at NJIT, Lear Research Center, and NJEDA Technology Advisory Board. And it's a former member of the New Jersey Israel Commission. Welcome, Judith. Thank you, Moises. So I'm really uh, delighted to be here and I would like to thank Tim from UIDA and Moises from Elsevier for inviting me to come and talk today about collaboration in cluster-based economic development. And I wanna talk a little bit about innovation and entrepreneurship and ecosystems and really what is important to make all of these things operate super effectively. On the next slide, we see innovation as a driver of economic growth. And it's a critically important driver of the future success. And countries on a global basis are all looking at innovation as a way to drive economic growth, handle national security issues, and address the health and well being of all of our citizens. And we certainly saw under the last two years with the recent uh, health issues associated with COVID that innovation was critically important to solving the kinds of problems that we had. And across the globe, countries are seeking to harness the power of their invention to innovation pipelines to address a wide range of different problems that we had. As I said, everything from the immediate societal challenges that we've seen with COVID and the intended social inequities to longer term issues, things like climate change are just one example of the kinds of problems that we believe innovation can help us address. And today I'd like to talk about innovation, entrepreneurship and ecosystems and provide some comments and observations on how to effectively link and leverage resources to effectively accelerate positive economic outcomes. And I'll make some comments, you know, specifically about things that we're doing in New Jersey. And I'll talk towards the end of the presentation about a, a tool that we have implemented that we're calling uh, Research with New Jersey, which is a way to pull together information across the academic uh, infrastructure in New Jersey. So on the next slide, a little bit of um, stage setting. 
Governor Murphy uh, is the current governor of New Jersey. And they, you know, they always like to say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And you know, he talks a lot about wanting to have an innovation economy and to make sure that that is more than just a slogan. You need to have some measurable economic growth targets that you're looking for. And it's important to have a robust economic plan in place. And similar to Yuida, who talked about talent, innovation, and place, the state of New Jersey's plan talks about people, it talks about communities, it talks about innovation and making government work well together. And if you don't have a really robust plan, your economic future ends up becoming reactive at best. And at worst, it becomes something that's in the hands of, of others. And they may have very parochial perspectives and outcomes leading to potentially suboptimal or even negative outcomes. So the economic plan for New Jersey has these four pillars of people, communities, innovation, and government. And these elements work together synergistically to create a stronger and fairer New Jersey for all citizens. And diversity, equity, and inclusion is really an important underpinning of everything that we do. We want to ensure that everyone is able to contribute to the plan. Our people element involves things like retraining and upskilling, starting from really the earliest levels of learners all the way through adult learners. Uh, I was speaking to uh, someone who said, you know, lifelong learning really never stops. If you think about some of the jobs that are important in our innovation economy today, these are jobs that did not exist when I went to school. So you need to continually be refreshing your skills. And it doesn't end with that formal education. There may be online credentialing and other things that you need to do. And as innovations become realities, new jobs are created and old ones disappear, or they may change drastically as a result of perhaps automation and newer technologies. Uh, some of the things that are happening around some of the new climate change technologies. Um, New Jersey has got a big focus on wind technology with a wind port in South Jersey. And part of the focus of that is not only building the windmills that are going to go off the, uh, the shore of New Jersey, but also retraining individuals who may be skilled workers to give them the kinds of training so that they're going to be able to maintain these, these windmill structures and operate them. And so, as I said, you know, many of the jobs of the future don't exist today, and we are perhaps not even sure what they're, you know, what they're going to be. You know, when I went to school, I studied computer science and, and mathematics, and I don't think anybody would have thought that there was like a social media, you know, data scientist role that somebody might be applying for. Now, communities are really the backbone of society. And New Jersey's plan calls for investing in the outdated infrastructure and invigorating our cities. And certainly being home for, gosh, what, the last, the last two years has put significant pressure on our cities and many of the Main Street businesses have suffered. And so have the gatherings of the innovation community. I'm sure many of you, uh, for things that you've done, with UEDA and with your uh, university groups, there were various meetups and conferences where there would have been serendipitous encounters that would spark opportunities. Again, when I was working at NJIT, one time I ended up uh, taking the uh, light rail from Newark to our campus. It was about a quick 10 minute ride. And while I was on the train, I happened to see one of our faculty members from biomedical engineering. And I also saw one of the companies who was located in our business incubator that was located you know, right on campus. When the three of us got off of the train, we were able to have a quick conversation to introduce that Dean of biomedical engineering to a company that was working in an area where there was great opportunities for collaboration. And those types of serendipitous interaction 
have really suffered as a result of uh, everyone needing to be home. And as we are now starting to get back in place, people are now able to start to have those, those conversations, which are critically important for creating kinds of connections that we need. And yes, I know the electronic platforms, uh, you know, such as Zoom and some of the other ones certainly do enable a broader global participation. You know, for example, in this, uh, you know, th this kind of meeting, you're certainly able to make connections with people that you were not able to see face to face. There just is really no interaction, no substitute for face to face real life interactions. Now, New Jersey likes to say that uh, innovation is its birthright. And New Jersey has been home to many key innovations. And some of the things that we like to say coming from New Jersey is that we were Silicon Valley before there was a Silicon Valley, particularly with the invention of the transistor uh, at Bell Labs, Murray Hill, in the biopharma space, New Jersey sometimes is known as the medicine chest of the world because there are so many big pharma companies who had had R&D facilities up in New Jersey. And our plan within New Jersey, our, our strategic plan calls for creating clear sector priorities based on looking at the existing assets that we have, our strengths, everything from academic strengths all the way up through manufacturing activities and implementing specific programs to support companies within those sectors. It's not just one thing to say, I, you know, to have an aspiration, but you really need to look at the resources and the capabilities that you have. And that's where some of the tool that I'll talk about again a little bit later, give you the opportunity to find the capabilities uh, that you have to really pull a sector together. And then government, we'd like to make government uh, more efficient, more effective. Uh, again, certainly, you know, the last year has strained many of the, uh, the government systems uh, and new ones had to be created relatively quickly to deal with many of the COVID related uh, challenges to get funding out to, to citizens, to get funding and programming support out to, uh, out to companies. And on the next slide, I'll show you the, the individual clusters that New Jersey has been focused on. You know, life sciences, again, has, is a critically important component of, of our activities, our economic growth in New Jersey. Clean energy, and then specifically, in addition to clean energy, offshore wind, the technology sector, the non-retail food and beverage space, film and digital media, advanced manufacturing, advanced transportation and logistics, and professional and financial uh, services. And some of the things that, uh, you know, that underlie these areas, you know, because we've had some conversation uh, with people around photonics and they'll say, well, where is photonics and quantum computing on this slide that takes a look at the, the, the industry sectors that New Jersey is supporting? We say some of these underlying technologies have the capability to support the growth and the activity in multiple uh, multiple sectors. And we want to look at what we need to do to grow the talent to support those players. We want to look at who are the large corporate players, the manufacturers, the startup companies, who's working in academic research labs, who have the, the kernel of ideas that could be transferred and worked on with large corporations and then What's happening in our, our hospitals and government labs and supporting supply chain and service providers? You know, these are, as I said, kind of large headlines, you know, big buckets. And in developing a cluster, it, it sometimes may be necessary to break that down a little bit into to subclusters. So as an example, you know, I said life sciences is, is a really important sector in New Jersey. And one of the emerging sectors, subsectors within the life sciences area is cell and gene therapy. It's built on a number of the academic capabilities at a number of the New Jersey uh, universities, such as Rutgers and NJIT 
It's further supported by the development of some new prototyping and manufacturing facilities in Newark. And then they're collaborating with the large pharmaceutical companies and training partners and funders such as the US government. They're involved with the uh, National Institute of Innovation and Manufacturing Project uh, in Delaware Nimble. And then on the talent side of the equation, they educate and upskill, providing both generalized and customized training in cell therapy and biologics. So that when you're thinking about clusters within your communities, yes, it's great to have a big headline. Yes, it's great to have a big slogan, but then kind of break that down to see what exactly are you going to be doing in those specific areas so that you know, do I have the resources? Do I have the companies? What do I need to do to really pull things together? And on the next slide, if we take a look at cluster development activities, what you're trying to do is really link and leverage capabilities and resources to provide support. So you're looking for that sweet spot between what is happening at the industry level? What is the opportunities that we have? What can we do in terms of a financing perspective so that we've got all of the pieces operating really well together to grow this cluster? This morning before I joined uh, this particular meeting, I was at a session that was organized between the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, a number of private uh, venture groups within New Jersey, as well as some academic people looking at specific opportunities. Again, this was a, a life sciences opportunity where we're saying, what is the growth of life sciences in New Jersey? Who are some of the startup companies? And we're giving startup companies an opportunity to present. And then we're looking to help connect them with the other appropriate resources that they need to grow their business. And what was you know, sort of heartening for me is that one of the companies who was presenting was a company that I had originally met when it was a graduate master's student and an undergraduate student who had been working in the lab with one of our faculty members. And that was back in uh, 2016. They now formed a company, they've licensed technology from the university. They've gone on to receive a number of uh, federal SBIR and STTR awards. They're now out looking for doing their Series A funding so that you can see you can really grow that cluster. And it was great to, to hear them see about what are some of the other connections that we can make for them within the overall uh, ecosystem. So that when you look at your region, you have to think about, do I have openness, trust, and a willingness to cooperate? Do I have a focus on inclusivity and flexibility. Now this next slide takes a look at a model that MIT, uh, some faculty from MIT, Fiona Murray and Phil Budin have put together that really shows all of the linkages between the innovation stakeholders. And we putting, you know, we're putting the entrepreneurs really kind of at the, at the top of this circle. And what are the resources that they need, what are the resources, what are the piece part elements that you need within your innovation ecosystem? You need risk capital, you need funding. And some of that may come from venture capitals, it may come from angel investors, it may come from both federal grants, it may come from state grants. Uh, many of your universities, for those of you who are on the call from universities, many universities have gotten into the game of providing uh, early proof of concept funding to student teams or to ventures that are associated somehow with their academic in infrastructure. So you need a little bit of money to potentially start moving things along. You then need corporate partners. A corporate partner may be someone who's gonna take that early stage piece of innovation and test it out within their facility. A corporate partner may be able to look at something and provide some feedback and say, we've tried this before and it's not gonna work, or they may be able to look at something and provide a commentary of saying, hey, this is a really great idea. And if it gets tweaked in a particular way, here's how it can move forward in a more effective 
manner. Additionally, uh, some of the programs that my commission is looking to do is to see where large corporations may be willing to serve as uh, beta test sites for some of the technologies that both academics and uh, our entrepreneurs are looking to develop where they've got the capability to have something trialed out in their environment. For, as an example, if someone is working on uh, healthcare technologies, perhaps a hospital will be able to say, we're willing to try out this therapy, or if it's a digital health uh, you know, data records capability, they may be willing to trial it and give really that real world opportunity. And then government comes into play. Because again, government frequently is going to be the cheerleader helping to set the rules of the road to help ensure that some of these engagements can take place very effectively. And university partners. Again, many of the times I see entrepreneurs, they want to look to our university partners, both in terms of people, some of the talent that they're looking to hire for their businesses. And sometimes there's government programs that will allow you to hire uh, students and through some of the government programs we have with uh, the Department of Labor may pay for some of the uh, cost of hiring a summer intern. Universities also have some really fantastic specialized equipment on their facilities, on their campuses that are not being used 24 seven by the university. And again, we have some programs um, in New Jersey where we've provided some funding to entrepreneurs to get access and use some of that specialized equipment at the universities. And again, when I show you, you know, what we've done with our research with New Jersey Platform, we've encouraged the universities to populate that platform with information about their equipment capabilities to make it easy for other parties to be able to identify who's got that specialized piece of equipment that I'd like to be able to utilize to further advance my, uh, my capability. Now, in terms of these ecosystems, there's some things that uh, are important to note about them. Again, there's multiple actors involved in them. You know, there's, there are people from the public sector, private sector, and sometimes there's, uh, you know, intermediary organizations who might be involved. It might be a trade organization in New Jersey. Uh, there's a bio affiliate, Bio New Jersey, who sometimes serves as an intermediary helping to connect the players specifically in the, in the life sciences space. We have another uh, trade organization, uh, Tech United, which is a little bit more focused on businesses within the tech, broadly speaking, in the technology specter, and they help make some of the connections. And then universities themselves may have individuals who serve some of that boundary spanning capability, helping to make connections to keep that ecosystem moving. So the ecosystem needs to be, you know, flexible and dynamic. You may have things that you say, we can look at, we can say, what is the local ecosystem? So it could be as small as an area around a particular town. So it might be what's happening at the Princeton ecosystem or the Newark, New Jersey ecosystem or what's happening in Trenton. And then we have things like what are happening at the regional level? What's happening in terms of the life sciences ecosystem in New Jersey? And then when we think about the, you know, the regional dimensions, just because we happen to have the state of New Jersey sitting in a particular spot, we happen to also think about the ecosystem by looking to who are some of the other states and areas that we are directly adjacent to because companies and people don't just stop because there happened to have been a state border there so that you might have a mid-Atlantic area ecosystem or a North Jersey that bleeds into New York area ecosystem where players are coming together. And then of course, there's things that happen at the national level. Frequently, these ecosystems, again, are going to be sector-based because people who are specifically interested perhaps in things in the life sciences area really wanna to talk to other people who are in that particular industry or sector base. It needs to be open and inclusive to involve anybody who wants to participate from, again, the large corporate players all the way down to the student who's thinking about starting or has just started 
business uh, business opportunities. And you need to be able to be open and willing to share connections, willing to want to be able to collaborate. And the kinds of collaboration can be everything from the establishment of formal alliances and uh, coalitions to sort of informal sharing of things. Uh, recently, you know, the federal government had uh, had a challenge that was the Build Back Better challenge. I'm sure, again, many who are on this call may have participated with their states in uh, submitting proposals to that. And people came together relatively you know, quickly from all of these different sectors to be able to say, we're gonna participate in pulling together a proposal addressing a particular you know, challenge that we would like to get federal funding for. And so people came together for that. Some of the um, challenges you know, were not then further funded, but yet people continue to remain together loosely to say, okay, well, what other opportunities are we going to be able to, uh, to focus on? On the next slide, there's some examples of some of the things that we have done uh, in New Jersey. I'm sorry, this, this slide is really, again, kind of talking about leveraging the different elements of the, uh, of the ecosystem to drive economic development. And again, these are the pieces, you know, some of the words and some of the things that you wanna be thinking about as you're driving uh, economic development and you're looking for ways to see how can I collaborate. The next slide shows some of the examples of the cluster activity in New Jersey. And again, I you know talked about the life sciences uh, activity, uh, a lot of activity going on in the life sciences area in New Jersey. Many, many companies uh, are participating in that 14 of the top 20 big pharma companies have headquarters in New Jersey. So there's a real strength around that. And so there's a lot of existing capabilities. Clean tech is more of an starting emerging area in, uh, in New Jersey. Uh, the Windport that I had mentioned uh, earlier is the nation's first purpose-built offshore wind marshalling port promising to position New Jersey as a hub of the U.S. offshore wind industry. And it's going to have a lot of capabilities in terms of heavy lift wharfs, component laydown areas, a lot of access to the Atlantic Ocean, you know, free of some of the vertical restrictions and access to a lot of highly skilled tradespeople and technical workforce. Uh, some of the academic institutions that are located in the southern part of the state have received some funding to help develop uh, workforce development uh, criteria. And then diversity, equity, and inclusion has been a, you know, a hallmark and a real focus of inclusive engagement for our economy. Uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology in partnership with Rutgers University, Princeton, Stevens, uh, Montclair, uh, Rowan, and some of the other schools in New Jersey received an award from the National Science Foundation on a project called ADVANCE. And the focus of ADVANCE is to ensure that women faculty across our institutions are really able to effectively participate in the in invention to innovation uh, pipeline, that there's not some underlying implicit bias that is preventing them from being effective participants in that. And so we've come together, uh, my commission is, is also involved in the project. We've come together to do a number of things but again, it's a collective piece looking at here, the state as a whole, it tends to be this particular project is technology inclusive. So we've got faculty from life sciences and chemistry and advanced manufacturing and IT and cybersecurity. So a whole range of things that are being worked on at our universities are part of the clustering activity. And we want to ensure that we've got an inclusive and open opportunity uh, for them. And within New Jersey on the next slide, we have a 
suite of different types of programs that are available to really help companies across the lifespan of a company from their getting started point to getting established to growing. And while not shown on this slide are all of the COVID related uh, relief efforts, I do wanna talk about a few of the programs that we have that again are particularly relevant to this getting creating ecosystem activities. One of the programs um, that we hold is something called Founders and Funders. And it's really a speed dating opportunity for the founders to get an, a chance to meet with investors. And so companies will submit an application to participate in Founders and Funders based on their one page executive summary. They will get matched up with different investors who've indicated that those are the types of technology areas that they're interested in uh, investing in. And then during this day long meeting, they'll get their list of really speed dates or 15 minute sessions where they'll be able to talk to investors. And for investors, it's been a really effective way to meet a lot of companies all at once in the areas that they are that they're interested in. And as I said, after the two years of everyone being home, we're really excited to be able to hold that event in person in early June. The state is also a proponent of uh, Golden Seeds. Golden Seeds is an angel capital network that focuses on investing in businesses that have a female in a C-suite position in a business. Uh, the state has helped stand up the New Jersey chapter of Golden Seeds. Golden Seeds has uh, chapters across the country. And as part of what they do in New Jersey, we'll do these early office hours to help companies who are just getting started get a chance to talk to an investor and get some early insight on are they ready? What are some of the steps they need to take to really effectively grow their business? I'll talk a little bit later on our research uh, with New Jersey platform, but it's a way for companies at all sizes to get visibility into what's happening at our New Jersey universities, but it's also a way for the New Jersey universities to find out what is happening at some of their other academic partner institutions. So as they go after some of the larger federal funds, they'll be able to find out who are the people that they may be able to collaborate with on those institutional, institutional grants, as well as an opportunity to see who else may have a particular piece of equipment that they want to be able to, uh, to access. My commission specifically has some seed grant and voucher programs, again, to help these early stage companies get a little bit more traction as they start to grow into the ecosystems. There's various loan programs uh, as well. And one of the things that we find is really important and our commission you know, does is really to talk to the companies and talk to people to help them try to make the connections for them to other players. Because a lot of times people don't understand all of those different piece parts that are part of the ecosystem and how they can connect and some of the other resources that may be important to them. On the next slide, we'll take a look at the uh, research with New Jersey uh, platform. This is our marketing slide that we have, have developed where we say to people, are you looking for information on the various capabilities that we have in New Jersey? We have a portal research with New Jersey that has really been built up in partnership with, uh, with Elsevier using a number of their, their capabilities to find ways that you can through a search engine mechanism, type in different capabilities, different terms of what you're looking for. We have about 5,000 different academic profiles that people can search on um, close to 261 different research outputs, which are papers and publications that they've had uh, information on grants as well as facilities. We currently uh, have 
partnered with a number of the New Jersey uh, universities to put this on, uh, Montclair State, NJIT, Princeton, Rowan, and Rutgers. And we're hoping you know, eventually to be able to get some of the other academic institutions uh, partnering on this particular platform. We're particularly focused on the R&D capabilities. So this means you know, companies and are looking for who, the STEM capabilities, you know, science, technology, engineering, uh, and mathematics are the areas that we're focused on in terms of being able to help identify what are the capabilities uh, in New Jersey. Some of the other use cases that we have identified is that as companies are looking to enter New Jersey, companies who might be currently located outside of the US who are looking to figure out where they want to establish home base in the United States, we want them to know what are the kinds of R&D capabilities in New Jersey that could be helpful for them and would be useful as they look to set up their capabilities. And so research with New Jersey as a platform really helps people on both sides of the R&D equation come together, you know, because we've got the researchers who are, you know, kind of focused on those curiosity driven programs, as well as, you know, the big development kinds of capabilities, people that are looking at the uh, industry sets of capabilities. And then on the next slide, we take a look at one of the programs that we've currently uh, established our clean tech and catalyst R&D voucher program. And as part of that program, I, I had mentioned earlier, companies can get access to unique capabilities at some of our academic labs, as well as non-academic uh, partners. And we wanna ensure that all of these capabilities were really pulling from our research with New Jersey uh, platform to make it easy for people to find the capabilities that they are that they are looking for as they're moving moving forward. Some of the other uh, things that we're looking to be able to do is on our platform potentially highlight certain key areas. Uh, when COVID was uh, particularly important, we had people wanted to be able to know like what's happening at New Jersey universities in the area of COVID. So you wouldn't have to type in all the terms in the search bar, but we would have a sort of pre-populated search engine tile that you could that you could click around those particular areas. And we're trying to identify what are the other pillars of strength that we wanna be able to highlight in New Jersey in terms of those clusters that we have that really showcase the kinds of work and capabilities um, that we are doing. And I think there's possibly one more slide that says, thank you. It's really been a delight to, uh, to present to everyone. We have a website that has information uh, on the commission. That's the website. There's my contact uh, information, happy to, to follow up further. And we'll see if there's some comments in the uh, Q&A that either I or Moises may be able to uh, Hey Judith, we, yeah. we did have a question from Rebecca. Yeah. So, she said, how big is your founders and funders event? How many fun founders are allowed to participate? So we typically um, end up having, I believe they're going to end up having about a hundred people, uh, you know, participating uh, charity. Again, you know, you as, as, as we look to, to put it, they do tell companies who participate that they should be sure that they have some level of traction. Again, if they're too early on, it's gonna be a situation where the investors are not gonna to wanna to talk to them. Then there's some other office hours or other support that, uh, that we can provide. I know Bio New Jersey is also holding a bio partnering event coming up in uh, early May, and they're trying to target to get 100 investor groups participating and several hundred uh, companies participating three I think about 300 companies participating that's great um, and, and I know you said you presented Judith uh, thank you first of all uh, and uh, really appreciate the the insights there 
Um, do you have uh, any insight into uh, how the pandemic has impacted your models permanently or anything that you've been working on permanently? What, what trajectories have you seen change as a result of, of the pandemic? So I wanna say one of the other programs that we were going to uh, implement and many, again, many people on this call may be familiar with, you know, these notions of innovation districts. Uh, I'm sure, again, that's something that's probably, you know, Tim, a, a topic that has been talked about with, uh, you know, with UEDA. And we were starting to look at what kind of programs, programming support could we do for New Jersey innovation districts? Could we have a program where municipalities could apply to get a designation as an innovation district and what would be the criteria to be considered an innovation district uh, when the state of New Jersey set, set these potential programs up, there was no funding associated with it. So it was almost more a designation that could be used for marketing a particular region and area. We did put our innovation you know, district plans on hold a bit because we said people are just not coming together face to face and there's too many other things that municipalities are trying to to deal with as a result of um, as a result of covid we have seen that you know that covid has certainly on some of our grants with some of our early stage companies when covid first happened you know we were wondering are how are these early stage tech entrepreneurs are they going to be able to survive or is you know covid going to you know be be the kiss of death for them and we have found that companies that we supported with funding in 2020 and again it was a small number of companies it was 13 companies that we supported with initial grants when we looked at them a year later they were all still in business uh, many of them had added additional staff to their companies, they had 46% had actually grown their footprint in New Jersey, either by expanding office space or lab space. And when we took a look at how they were able to leverage state funding for additional funding, they were able to raise effectively 16X the amount of money that we had put into them through either additional government grants, uh, angel investment and, uh, and debt financing. So we thought like, okay, this is great. And for some of our other programs, we've just seen a real pent up demand on those super early stage, uh, super early stage companies in terms of, of things that they're, they're trying to do. I think we're gonna still be in this continuing hybrid environment, right? So you're gonna be face-to-face -face and on Zoom. So we're gonna all have to be, sure that we're you know understanding how to continue to to develop those capabilities and those networks uh i ended up hiring staff that i had never met in person you know we did all the interviewing online and then and then you know like nine months later so, oh, okay now we're coming into the office and wow you're taller or shorter or you know than than i thought when all i saw you was from you know from you know from the waist up and it also took you know i'd say you know, deliberately, you know, making sure of putting time on the calendar to be able to meet new people and you say, okay, here, let me schedule a 15 minute, you know, meet and greet with somebody that otherwise you might have, you know, like met at a meetup or you would have met, you know, face to face at the, you know, at, at the water cooler. So certainly some of the uh, ways we interact are going to be changing. Absolutely. And I, I know at UEDA, we've seen a number, you know, of these business succession, you know, programs that, right. that take, you know, to business growth. And, and I was wondering if you had any true business succession beyond growth, you know, to make sure that once companies grow and those, those entrepreneurs are ready to move on to something else, that the business still stays within New Jersey or, or that business is still viable. Are you looking at that? Uh, yes, you know, yes. Yeah, so, so, so that that's that's a great question, Tim. So, our, the commission is really the earliest stages of funding, and then we do want to push them into other 
financing and other incentive opportunities from the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, other, other opportunities to keep these businesses in New Jersey. So that, again, there were other parts who were giving out, you know, like thousands and thousands of COVID relief grants. You know, we've probably touched, you know, 200 companies. So we are able to spend time talking with those companies and then we wanna check in with them periodically. And I would certainly encourage groups that are working with companies, like make sure like every six months, whether it's just a quick email, what's happening with you? Yeah, and, and I know people, I mean, I hate to do this as well. I mean, I hate to fill out surveys, right? We all hate, we all hate to fill out surveys, but if you can't collect that data coming back, it becomes hard to be able to demonstrate what's been happening in your ecosystem. It's harder to get funding towards programs because people want to know what's the return on investment. Was I able to grow jobs within my community? What have, you know, what have been the success stories? Uh, team, there, there's a question. Um, so from Rebecca Robinson, can you provide any examples of an instance where a partner used the research with New Jersey tool and it led to a research collaboration? And in those instances, who does the company reach out to? The faculty member, the corporate engagement office, et cetera? So that, 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 that's a, you know, that is absolutely a great question. I would say uh, that Generally, what happens is a company will perhaps use that research with New Jersey tool to identify somebody that they potentially want to work with. On our platform, the different schools have different um, approaches in terms of how they want their faculty to be contacted. I, th I think you know this, Moises. You know, some of our schools will have up there the faculty member members, you know, email you know, phone number so you can reach out to that individual directly. Some of the other schools would prefer that you go through a corporate uh, engagement office. And faculty are unique individuals. You know, some of them are very happy to sort of take these cold call emails. Others, it's a little bit more effective uh, if you're not getting a response to work through a, uh, a corporate engagement uh, office. Uh, some of our faculty from corporate engagement had been on a trip to uh, Ireland a couple years ago before COVID. They were able to then understand what some of the people in Ireland were looking for and then ultimately set up some research collaboration uh, opportunities. We used it when we were uh, responding to the uh, Build Back Better proposals around some of the technology uh, areas. And we wanted to be sure that we were including all of the New Jersey universities who potentially had capabilities in that area. We used the research with New Jersey platform to ensure that we hadn't uh, you know, missed potentially schools who had capabilities uh, in, a particular, uh, in a particular area. And I know that our faculty uh, at uh, one of the institution said he likes to look at it to see what is some of the other equipment available at some of the other New Jersey uh, universities that they're able to get access to. Well, that's great. Thank you for that. And, uh, you know, recognizing that we're, we're coming up on the end of the hour, uh, I want to I wanna thank you. And as a neighbor uh, in Pennsylvania, I know that, that there's been some question as to the origins of New Jersey being the garden state, but I think you can very easily stake that claim as it yeah. relates to entrepreneurship, right? So uh, congrats on the work that you're doing. And, and thank, thank you for sharing that with us today. I appreciate, uh, appreciate your time and, 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 and all that you're doing. And Moises, uh, for you and, and to you and to Elsevier for, for your support and wanted to thank you uh, as well. So uh, really appreciate you both being here with us today and, and, uh, and thank you. And I just wanna share briefly before okay. we do, uh, before we do adjourn, that we have our upcoming annual summit, uh, where we're sharing a lot of these ideas, best practices, uh, innovative concepts uh, in San Antonio. That's October 9th through the 12th. Registration, early bird registration is now open. You can access that at summit.universityeda.org. Uh, leading into that, the Sunday, the October 9th day, will be our Economic Accelerator Day, uh, which will be focused on economic resiliency and economic equity, as well as specific content for EDA University centers. So please don't uh, 
uh, don't miss this, uh, this important event, these important conversations, and uh, this is where a lot of collaboration takes place. So we hope to see you there. Uh, with that, uh, we'll wrap up today's webinar. Uh, again, thank you, Judith. Thank you, Moises. Uh, thank, thank you, Elsevier. And uh, thank you, well, thank you to all the attendees for being with us today and, and spending an hour with us. Uh, we really appreciate you being here, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.